We're here in the convention and we want to get some great commentary on what are the important issues of the campaign. Well, you know, the important issues for both sides, certainly for voters, over and over again for months and months and months as we found on CNN, has been jobs, the economy, jobs, the economy, jobs, the economy. That's really it. Every other issue takes a back seat to that as far as voters are concerned. What is Romney's strategy to increase economic prosperity and to increase employment as compared to Obama's strategy? Well, you know, in some ways they echo a little bit the classic differences that have always existed between Republicans and Democrats in all of this. Uh, they, there's obviously more of an emphasis on the Republican side, on the Romney side of saying, look, we need to spur business, we need to get them going. That means making sure we keep taxes under control, that's how it will grow. On the Obama side, it's a little bit more of saying, yeah, maybe some of that's part of the equation, but we can spur business also by government investment and moving forward in a certain smart way with new ideas, that sort of thing. Uh, in the end, you know, the economy is very tough for either side, and proving that either idea will work in this economy is going to be a difficult task. Can increasing government spending produce economic growth? <laughs> if I knew that, I guess I'd be the president. Uh, that's the big debate, right? Uh, you know, one idea is that you can spend a lot of money in the stimulus. Some economists criticize the stimulus for not being big enough, that if it were much, much bigger, it would have produced a certain result. On the other hand, you have economists who look at it and say, you cannot go that deeply into government spending without creating other long-term problems. So, look, that's a question nobody can really answer right now. I think either party, if they really knew how to get us out of this economic mess, would be very happy to do so because that would cement them into power. Well, somebody's got to be wrong on that issue, right? They both can't be right. <laughs> no, they could both be wrong, though. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Who do you think is wrong? Oh, I don't have any idea who's wrong. We'll just have to see. Which candidate wants to redistribute more wealth? Redistribute more wealth? Ah, that's, a, that's kind of a loaded phrase. You know what I mean? It's not... I, I don't think... I think when you talk about a country of 310 million people and you talk about these unbelievably complex plans for budget, I think when you throw on a phrase like this candidate wants to redistribute wealth a certain way, that becomes more of a political statement than a statement of economic fact. And it's a very dicey thing to say this one wants to do more or this one wants to do more because that phrase is, just, it's a loaded phrase and I'm not sure it's a terribly meaningful phrase because anytime somebody makes more money and somebody makes less money, arguably there's a redistribution of wealth happening. But is it a fact that the government redistributes its citizens' wealth by forcefully taking money from some citizens through taxes in order to provide free goods and services for others? I, again, you, again, you're using a, a phrase that I don't know that we can use as a fact. Redistributes wealth. Um, there are all sorts of things that happen with your taxes where, you know, you and I could both pay taxes and our money is used to build a road somewhere. Well, somebody benefits off that road that may or may not be you or I. Some people will say that's redistributing wealth, other people will say it's not. Actually, the roads are built with the gas tax and people pay based on how much they use the roads. If they don't use the roads, they pay less. If they use them a lot, they pay more. But on income tax, for example, uh, the American uh, taxpayers are taxed and then the money is used, for example, for farm subsidies. Uh, I have, well, that's just one example. Would you consider that to be redistributing wealth from I, the like taxpayer to the farmers? Again, I'm not, I, I think the phrase redistributing, redistributing wealth is, is, it's a politically loaded phrase that it implies different things to the people who hear it. So I am very hesitant to use that phrase because some people hear it and they say, that's, you know, you're in bed with the Republicans or you're against the Democrats or you're with the Democrats and you're against the Republicans. And our job at CNN is not to be either one, but simply to say, look, here's where the money was, here's what it was spent for. If you, the voters, or somebody else want to call that redistributing wealth, you're welcome to. But the phrase has become so loaded and so freighted with political meaning that I think it's just a, it's like saying which party is more, is, is more for freedom. Well, freedom's a very big word that arguably every American is for. But, but the Democrats might argue they're more for it than Republicans. Republicans might argue they're more for it than Democrats. 
So I'm really interested in your view that that uh, redistribution of wealth is a loaded phrase. Do you, you think that the government forcefully takes money from some citizens through taxes in order to give it to others, or you think that the government doesn't do that? I gave you an example like with the farm what subsidies. What do you mean by forcefully? Because we have taxes? Well, do you think... Uh, you know, are, you, are, taxes are, are taxed on anything, you have to pay it. I mean, well, uh, tax, tax, uh, are people forced to pay taxes? To pay taxes. So then that's not a loaded phrase, that's just a description of the fact. Well, that's, that's different than what you said differently. Redistribution of wealth has a certain connotation to it, which is different than taxation. It, it means uh, taking money from some citizens through taxes, forcefully, right. in order to provide goods and services for others. I'll give you another example. Well, they, Say, well, maybe goods and services for the same citizens you took them from as well. Well, if it's, if it's a user's fee... You're if, suggesting that it goes from one group... And necessity and of necessity goes to a different group, and that's not always the case. I pay taxes in my neighborhood, which benefit the schools my children attend. Right. That's not. I don't know if that's redistribution of wealth, but it's the very process you described. That is a case of taxes being used for something. It's yeah, very. I'm not different. saying that all taxes are redistributive. No, some are redistributed and some aren't. Well, now it's some. Well, yes, I suppose some go from this group and may wind up over here, and some go from this group and they might wind up over here. But to call, but to use the phrase redistribution of wealth in this day and time is something that both parties have attached a political meaning to, which goes beyond the economic reality of it, which is not to say there's not an economic reality of what happens with our taxes and where money is spent. That's absolutely true. But the political meaning that is attached to it is so heavily freighted that I think uh, people like us at CNN who are trying to objectively just report and say, look, this is just what happens. You, if we have a tax increase, we'll tell you how to tax increase. If you want to know where the money was spent, we'll tell you where the money was spent. If you want to decide if that's a redistribution of wealth, if Democrats or Republicans want to argue about that, they're welcome to. But we don't pick sides in that. Is there a difference between forcing somebody to pay for a service that's rendered to them, like you do, like you do in your, when you pay for your kid's education in the neighborhood, in your town or your county. So you pay the county tax and they use it to uh, educate your kids. So you're getting a service for what you pay. Isn't there a difference between that on the one hand and requiring somebody to pay a tax in order to give it to someone else, say like in foreign aid? I, I, I mean, it's, it's I, I, I think there's so, the differences are so profound if you look at what you're talking about is the entire tax code i'm talking about redistributive taxes not not sir not say for example that the money that's used for the uh, defense everybody's defended so that's not redistributing wealth that's taxing american citizens in order to provide sir that same service to everyone but if you tax them in order to give money to farmers that's redistribution of wealth right uh, and no, I'm not going to say that's redistribution of wealth because of exactly what I've said all along. I've said this 17 times already. To, to use that phrase is to attach a political meaning to it that organizations like CNN do not do. Other groups can do it. We do not. What, is, the, what is that political meaning? That, that's interesting. I, I, the meaning is up to the people who are saying it. My point is that that is, that is what political people say. It's not what fair news people say. What fair news people say is... We will tell you if you're being taxed, we will tell you whether the tax passed, we'll tell you how much you're going to pay, and we'll tell you where it's spent. Then you decide what you want to call that. What we call it is a tax. That's the word. It's not fair to say that a certain group were taxed in order to give the money to someone else? It's not fair to say that it... I'm saying it's fair or not fair. I'm saying that that's a discussion for you guys to have. Thank you very much for the interview, and we appreciate you reasoning with us on the, in depth on this issue. Good luck. Good luck with the reporting.